Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 20th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Brussels, Belgium. I've talked in the past a couple times about Elasticsearch and MongoDB and how it is uh, being attacked. Most recently, there was a big rash of compromised MongoDB systems where attackers held the data for ransom or at least claimed to have it, even though they already had it deleted. The latest um, big data database that's being attacked like this is Hadoop. According to one of our handlers, actually, John Bamanek, who who wrote this for Fidelis, they have seen databases being deleted that were not adequately secured. And just like the other NoSQL databases, Hadoop also is often installed without credentials. I guess it was just a matter of time. And of course, like anything that you make accessible to the internet and don't adequately secure, it will get stolen or will get wiped in just a matter of time. And of course, this year will mean the end of SHA-1 based certificates. And starting next week, you may actually see some of the effects Effects. Mozilla is supposed to release Firefox 51 on Tuesday, and with that, SHA-1 based certificates will be marked unsafe. A week later, on January 31st, we'll get the same from Google with Chrome 56. And mid-February, with the February patch Tuesday, Microsoft will also cut off support for SHA-1 in Edge and Internet Explorer. Earlier this year, actually on January 1st, um, Windows already stopped accepting SHA-1 based certificates. So with that, you really, really need to get going quickly and make sure that you no longer have any SL web servers that use SHA-1 based certificates. Most existing browsers already allow you to disable them or present warnings whenever you visit a website with a SHA-1 certificate. If you are responsible for certificates in your organization, then please enable that feature so you'll be notified if you visit one of your own websites and they do still use a SHA-1 certificate. There has been some pushback. Facebook and others have noted that uh, quite a few of their users use browsers that do not yet support anything but SHA-1. But at this point, it doesn't look like any of the new browsers will push back any of their deadlines. And Google in a blog post revealed how its Verify Apps feature works in a little bit more detail. Verify Apps is a feature that you find in recent versions of Android. It will periodically check in with Google in order to check if any of the applications installed on a particular phone are considered insecure. Now, whenever a phone stops checking in with Google, then it is considered dead or insecure. One reason for it stopping to check in would be that the phone is turned off or the user did move on to a different phone. The other reason, of course, is that the last application installed on the phone did turn off the Verify Apps feature, which sometimes happens with malicious applications that are able to root the phone. So Google tracks very carefully what they're calling the retention rate, the rate at which phones are stopping to check in with Verify Apps after certain applications are installed. Applications with a very low retention rates are likely causing these phones to stop checking in with Verify Apps and and as a result, they may be considered malicious. This particular method did flag 25,000 apps that uh, were infected with one of the three popular Android malware families. And as a result, these apps were removed from the store after an additional manual review. And if you are a web application developer or a pen tester for that matter, and you are interested in learning more about JSON P injection, great blog post by Peter Popescu about 
what's the problem with JSONP and how to really mitigate uh, some of the problems. JSONP is really sort of a dirty workaround, the same origin policy. If you're trying to make an API call from JavaScript to another origin, the best uh, fix I believe, in my opinion, is that you're really just not using JSONP. Instead, uh, with modern browsers, you can do proper cross-origin resource sharing, which uh, can be much better controlled and is much easier to implement securely than JSONP. And if over the last month or so, you noticed a substantial decline in the number of email messages that deliver the Locky ransomware, well, you're not alone. Cisco has a blog post about how they're seeing that as well. They have seen this before, and apparently it's being linked to the Nickers botnet that's typically being used to distribute Locky. This botnet has been somewhat quiet recently, but over the last few days, Cisco saw somewhat of an increase, so they're expecting another wave of mail spam distributing Locky ransomware. And well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.